Well, welcome to this dry afternoon, and we hope it stays dry for the rest of the afternoon. This is a great day to celebrate our class of 22. Um, I'm so pleased that we've got so many family and friends here today. For a while, we didn't know whether or not we'd be able to have uh, meetings like this again, so it's great to have you all here. This ceremony is a very ancient one, and as our graduands, and they are graduands, cross the stage, I will cap them. And this then means that they are graduates, and they join a community of 191,000 scholars from across the globe, all of whom have studied at Strathclyde. After the students have crossed the stage, I will then give a short speech where I will just tell you a little about the university and our faculty. And then there will be an academic procession, we hope, as long as the rain holds off, up the hill and to the learning and teaching building where we will have refreshment. So it's a, my great pleasure to declare this congregation open and I would ask the head of the School of Government and Public Policy, Professor Anthony McGann, to present our students. Executive Dean. Oh, I thought I would, put, I would project. <laughs> Executive Dean. In the name of the university and by authority of the Senate, I present you to these students. For the degree of Masters of Research in French, Francesca Masciulo. <laughs> For the degree of Masters of Science in International Relations, Joseph Ignatius McCluskey. In public policy, Pranit Nangia Chowdhury. <laughs> Dadiwi Rachel Muzurura. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Economics, and Politics and International Relations, James Michael McClafferty. In French and Italian with International Study, Christina McLeod. In French and Journalism and Creative Writing, James Ender Fitzsimmons. and Amy Jane Lyle. In French and Marketing, Jessica Louise Martin. In French and Spanish with International Study, Molly Bernadette Dawson. Cass Izigi. In Marketing and French with International Study, Ramya Manivanan. In Italian and Journalism and Creative Writing, Rachel Patterson. In Italian and Spanish, Claudia Macari. <laughs> Paul Groom. <laughs> In philosophy, politics, and economics, Claire Alsha Felt.
Adam John Iverson. <laughs> Robbie Baines Player. <laughs> Brian Watson. <laughs> Joseph Bishop. Ewan McGregor. In philosophy, politics, and economics with international study, Bruce Stewart. In politics and international relations, Zianib Nisha Ahmad. Abby Browning. Erin Louise Bryans. Mered Campbell. Amy Elizabeth Cornett. Helena Grieve, <laughs> Rachel Ann Griffin, <laughs> Jacob Martin David Hill, <laughs> Carmen Young appear. Yulia Limesheva, <laughs> Isla Robson Strang Leslie, <laughs> Charlie James McKenzie, <laughs> Peter Martin. Abigail Murray, James Kester Nelson, Jane Hannah Rind, Libby Scott. Bruce Finlay Tate, <laughs> Stella Grace Telford, <laughs> Charlotte Catherine Thomas, <laughs> Helena Douglas Tipper. Rebecca Jane Wilson, Mark Robert Brown, Zhan Miao Deng, Matthew John Edward Donnelly. Dominic Griffith, <laughs> Zaka Jamal, <laughs> Louise Johnston, <laughs> Veronica Lang.
Sophie Lynch. Callum Macmillan. Emily Catherine Roll. Matthew Alexander Smith. Alia Akatan. Seha Muhammad. Megan Lynn Wilson. In politics and international relations and economics, Alistair Fell. In politics and international relations and English, Lindsay Skelton. In politics and international relations in French, Emma Rachel Miller. In politics and international relations and history, Adam U. Black. Finlay William Hassett. Ross Montgomery Mayer. Matthew Paul Rowlands. Robbie Gary Brown. Jack Stephen Vaughan. Kira Maxpadgian. Alex Jane Robertson. In politics and international relations and journalism and creative writing, Catherine Elizabeth Rogan Lawson. Iona McEwen. In politics and international relations and law, Alison Balmer. Grace Queen. Kirsty Jane Smith. In politics and international relations and social policy, Molly Coyle. Reeve Mary Ann Gallagher. Hannah Maria Lynn. Megan Alice McLean. Max Kelly Felt Conway. Rohan Fern. Alina Kate McBride. Chloe Catherine McFadgen. In politics and international relations in Spanish, Reeve Christie McBride.
Rebecca Fagan. In politics and international relations with English, Stephen James Johnson Ramsey. In politics and international relations with history, Heather McConnell. Laura Ann Elizabeth Taylor. Katie Leslie Flockhart. Fraser Jackson. Kirsty Bamford. Sean Patrick Macarivi. In politics and international relations with psychology, Thomas Craig. In politics and international relations with social policy, Sophie Emma Buchanan. In Spanish and education with international study, Mark Cunningham. In Spanish and French, Kelsey Crossan. Morgan Catherine Leslie. Beth Leishman. L. Jean McAlpine. Alice Scott, Michael Peter Scott, in Spanish and French with international study, Rebecca Wiper, Amber Brody. Helen Harvey. In Spanish and Italian, Lily Gutierrez. Shania Boswell. Rachel Margaret Gallica. In Spanish and Journalism and Creative Writing with International Study, Morgan Campbell. In Spanish and Law, Luis Peter Harvey. In Hospitality and Tourism Management and French with International Study, Neve Rebecca Ironside. Reese Thomas Jack. In Humanities and Social Sciences, Jonathan Alireza. Kerry Lee Donachy. Kirsty Taylor Gowdy. Amy Hogg. Louise Laird. J. 
Jennifer Russell. In politics and international relations, Mohammed Al-Felakawi. Well, I have to admit, that was one heck of a workout. <laughs> we need to get people coming in from the other side so I can get the other muscles done, right? So let me warmly welcome you once again to this special ceremony. And it is a memorable day, a day that marks the culmination of many years of demanding work and dedication for our new graduates. So before we do anything else, let's give a round of applause to our class of 2022. <laughs> The last two years have been particularly challenging for all of us due to the coronavirus pandemic. And you, our graduates, have shown great resilience, adaptability, and determination to arrive at this day. For those of you graduating in front of your family, friends, and supporters, this is a proud moment. They have supported you through unprecedented hardship and I'm sure you're extremely grateful for their support. So graduates, let us take the opportunity to show our appreciation and gratitude with a round of applause for your family, friends, and supporters. Similarly, all of our graduates have been helped by my wonderful colleagues who've worked hard to provide you with a first-class education and outstanding student experience despite the pandemic and for whom your success is their reward. So graduates, please join me in showing your appreciation to them and those colleagues who made today possible. In a short while, you'll be invited to join the, an academic procession when we leave the hall. This is a symbol that you're no longer students, but now full members of the academic community at Strathclyde. And one, as I said earlier, numbers over 191,000 across the world. Our university was founded by Professor John Anderson in 1796 during the Scottish Enlightenment for the benefit of all and as a place of useful learning. While John Anderson is best remembered for being a professor of natural philosophy, what we now call physics, much earlier he was a professor of oriental languages, a true polymath, bridging the divide between the human and the scientific. And it was great to see so many language graduates here today. Anderson believed in knowledge for the greater good and for all. This is what we now call widening access. And we've remained faithful to our founding principles. Strathclyde is at the forefront of widening access to higher education, welcoming those with the ability to learn regardless of their personal circumstances. 
We've already met the Scottish Government's 2030 target of 20% of our students coming from 20% of the most challenging areas of the country. And we've achieved this while having some of the highest entrance requirements in the UK. Our motto, Useful Learning, continues to apply today as we gain new knowledge and understanding that we can apply to the challenges we all face. Strathclyde is a research-intensive and knowledge-sharing university whose vision is to make a positive difference in the lives of our students, to society, and to the world. Through our groundbreaking research, we're helping to change the world for the better. In the recent published results of the 2021 Research Excellent Framework, which is the UK government system for assessing quality of research in UK higher education institutions, almost 90% of Strathclyde's research was assessed as world leading or internationally excellent. For the humanities and social sciences, 85% of our research was judged to be world leading or internationally excellent. And notably, the School of Government and Public Policy was ranked first in the UK. Our academics are the very best of the best. Strathclyde also has the second highest impact quality profile in Scotland, demonstrating the effect our research has on everyday lives in the real world. Through our research, we are leading the development of innovative technologies that will facilitate the transition from fossil fuels to clean, sustainable energy sources. We're leading the revitalization of this part of the city through the Glasgow City Innovation District, which is bringing companies both large and small here to work together with the university to create new ideas, technologies, and solutions to a range of problems. We're working across key research clusters, health tech, fintech, 5G, industrial informatics, space, and quantum, much of which is based within our technology and innovation center. And we recently welcomed a seventh research cluster dedicated to social innovation. We're growing Scotland's manufacturing capabilities as part of the fourth industrial revolution, which will see digitalization, automation, and artificial intelligence transform the sector and provide huge economic and employment opportunities. And all of this requires the partnerships that we foster, particularly with government and policymakers. And the School of Government and Public Policy is best placed to support us in this endeavor. Indeed, the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences is leading on new developments in policy, influencing through our strategic research theme, society and policy, and our new university-wide research cluster, focusing on social innovation across Scotland, the UK, and we hope the world. In pursuing our vision, we understand the value of successfully working in partnerships with business, government, and the third sector to make a difference. And we extend our global reach through academic partnerships with New York University, the University of Waterloo, and Stanford University, to name but a few. As a university, we're continually working to enhance our student experience, investing in our campus, as evidenced by our new Strathclyde Sport Building, and the learning and teaching building where we will all receive refreshment, and our health and well-being services are putting students at the heart of everything we do. Our progress and our efforts have been greatly recognized in recent years with a host of awards. We became the only university to win the Times Higher Education UK of the Year UK University of the Year twice, first in 2012 and again in 2019. We've also been named Business School of the Year, Workplace of the Year, and our colleagues won Research Project of the Year quite recently. And we're particularly proud of the achievements of our colleagues within the School of Government and Public Policy and more widely the faculty. 
For example, Professor Sir John Curtis has been exceptionally busy following several by-elections that have taken place over the past few months. And of course, we will watch with anticipation whether or not the outcomes we've seen in Wakefield and Tiverton lead to more significant changes elsewhere. I've already made reference to the School of Government and Public Policy's outstanding results in the UK-wide research excellence framework. However, it's worth reflecting on some details here. 93% of the publications crafted by our colleagues were judged world-leading or internationally excellent. In terms of impact, 100% of the work colleagues in the school do was judged world-leading. And the environment we would provide was recognized as supporting that internationally excellent and world-leading research. This is truly an outstanding result for us. Additionally, Dr. Patrick Bayer, our new reader in the School of Government and Public Policy, recently won 500,000 pounds from the Economic and Social Research Council to study how governments are engaged with climate change priorities. His research will help us better understand how and with what effect governments seek to influence discussions on global climate change. Additionally, the Centre for Energy Policy, led by Professor Karen Turner, currently advises the Scottish and UK governments on how to achieve net zero carbon emissions. Our alumni go from strength to strength too. Psychology and politics alumna Louise Pringle was recently appointed Director of Business Operations and Partnerships with East Renfrewshire Council. Congratulations today should also go to Yulia Lemesheva, Jacob Hill, and James Nelson for sharing the prize for the de best dissertation in politics and international relations. And congratulations also to Yulia for winning the prize of the best student. These are examples of, of just a small, this is a small group of examples of what we can achieve when we put our minds to it. However, to our graduates here in the Barony Hall, we're here to celebrate your achievements and the new chapter in your lives that's dawning. I hope that you not only take the knowledge and skills you've acquired during this time here to pursue and realize your aspirations, but that you remember our values and continue to be bold, ambitious, and innovative, but always mindful of the fact that in everything we do, we need to work with others and work for the betterment of others' lives, especially as we reflect upon the toll the coronavirus pandemic has had globally. So it is with immense pride that we see you graduate today. And though you may be leaving us, we hope that you will continue to stay in touch. Our alumni are incredibly important to us. And through your support, we will also be able to help those coming after you. So in closing, on behalf of my colleagues and our principal, Sir Jim McGregor, I wish you every success in your futures. Thank you. So we come to the end of the ceremony. In a few minutes, the academic procession will rise and lead our new graduates out and up the hill to the learning and teaching building for refreshment. And we'd like the families and friends to follow. So it gives me great pleasure to declare this congregation closed. And I ask you to stand as the procession leaves.